Welcome to Dual Enrollment Orientation. My name is Cameron Shirley and I'm the Dual Enrollment Coordinator here at Commerce High School. During this orientation, we're going to talk about some of the important dates for this semester, as well as look at some of the policies and procedures for dual enrollment. On the first slide, you'll note, um, please just make note of your first day of class and also the add drop deadline for your specific college. The add drop deadline is the specific date in which you have to add or drop a course before you would um, have some sort of a penalty. Um, so also note for Young Harris students, there are session A and session B dates. So you need to look at your schedule to determine if your classes are session A, session B, or if they are full term sessions. Um, there's a few things that our students need to be um, working on prior to class beginning. The first thing being logging into their school email. Um, so the college instructors, professors, they're going to begin communicating with our students through their college email account. And so it's very important for them to begin to check their college email um, on a regular basis for any updates that they might receive um, or anything else that they may need to do. So it's, um, it's good to go on and get logged into email um, and begin checking that very regularly. If there is anyone that does not have their login information, please come see me and I would be happy to, um, to help you get that information. Um, there's also online orientation for most of the colleges. Um, so if your college or institution has an online orientation, you need to make sure that that has been completed. Our students that are taking courses through Young Harris will have an in-person orientation. That's gonna be on Tuesday, August the 9th during ROAR in the auditorium. And that is required for all Young Harris students that are attending um, and taking dual enrollment classes this semester. All dual enrollment students will also need to be in there. Um, and so what we will do is we will have an orientation or a meeting for all dual enrollment students to discuss a few topics. And then the other students will be dismissed and our Young Harris students will remain in the auditorium to discuss um, specific Young Harris information. So just make sure that online orientation um, has been completed if you have one for your institution. The other thing is to make sure that you can log into Blackboard, Moodle, or Canvas. Um, each college uses a different platform, but that is the platform in which your course will be delivered. So you need to make sure that you're familiar with the platform, that you are logged in and, and are um, able to access that website so that once your class starts, you're able to get in and, and begin. Any students that are going to be taking classes on their college campus also need to go on and work on getting parking permits. Um, and then the next thing is just to check the syllabus as soon as class begins um, so that you have time to get any textbooks or materials that, um, that the class requires. Um, our online students are typically going to have an online textbook and not have to um, go to a bookstore to get a textbook. So that will be an option for most of our online students. Um, the students that are in Lanier Tech Engineering Fundamentals program, um, they should come see me because I already have your textbooks for you. Lanier Tech brought them um, and delivered them to me. So just come see me to get your textbooks. As far as schedules, so all of our dual enrollment students, um, they have to follow the schedule of the college and of Commerce High School. Our, our schedules may be a little bit different at times. So for example, Athens Tech may not have the same fall break as Commerce High School. So you may still have to work on your Athens Tech course, while we're on fall break for Commerce High School and vice versa. Um, so please make sure that um, you are, are checking your syllabus, look at the academic calendar for your specific college and make sure that you are following the calendar for both your college and high, Commerce High School. Um, class locations, so all of our students this year um, for safety reasons, each dual enrollment student that is taking a class, unless they are in one of these classes that are listed here, should be off campus during their course time. So Biology 1107, 1108, Math 1101 with Young Harris, Math 1111 with Lanier Tech, and Engineering 1000 with Lanier Tech will be meeting on campus. Otherwise, all of our students should be off campus during their dual enrollment time. Um, if transportation is an issue, please come see me and I will, I will help you work something out. 
Um, but otherwise, we expect all of our students to be off campus during that block. Students going to college campuses must ensure that they are arriving to college courses and also to their um, high school courses on time. And that's for any dual enrollment student too. Um, all of our students have plenty of time built into their schedule. So they should make sure that they are on time um, to their classes, whether it be at their college classes or at their high school classes. Um, we need to make sure that we are, we are arriving on time. Um, our biology students, for as far as their schedule, um, biology students will have their lecture on Tuesday, Thursday during first block, and labs will be on Wednesday during first block. Young Harris math students, their course will be second block. Um, there's two different sections. So one section will meet on Monday, Wednesday. The other section will meet on Tuesday, Thursday. And then there's an optional tutoring day on Friday for everyone. That is optional, it's not required, but the lecture days are required. Um, the students will find out their, their math section on Tuesday, August 9th at the required orientation meeting. The Math 1111 course with Lanier Tech is going to meet on Monday, Wednesday, and that lecture is going to be located in the lab at Central Office. That will be fourth block, and then their Engineering 1000 course with Lanier Tech will be during first block, and that will be on Tuesday, Thursday. It will also be in the lab at Central Office. So our dual enrollment classes, um, our students are gonna be responsible for several things. The first thing is checking their email. We've already discussed how important it is to check email. Next is reading and following the course syllabus. So especially in a college course, sometimes the instructors may or may not even remind students about important dates or upcoming um, tests or assignment due dates. So it's very important that students read and follow that course syllabus very closely to make sure that we are getting our assignments completed on time um, and keeping track of where we are supposed to be in the course. Um, it's also very important to abide by all student conduct policies at the college or institution. Um, the student must contact the professor or instructor from their college email if they have any questions regard, regarding the course or their grade. Um, a lot of times the instructors will not answer them if they respond from another email that's not their college email. So please just make sure, remind them to be using their college email if they're communicating with anyone at their college. Um, once a student reaches 18 years of age or attends a post-secondary institution, even as a dual enrollment student under the age of 18, they become an ineligible student. And so therefore, um, the rights formerly given to parents under FERPA transfer to the student. So parents are not able to talk to the college, institution, professor, instructor um, because of FERPA. So if you have questions as a parent, please contact me. Um, I might be able to contact the dual enrollment coordinator at that institution um, or at the college and talk to them about um, you know, what your questions or concerns may be. So you, please contact me if you have any questions. As far as financial information, tuition, mandatory fees, and books are covered by dual enrollment funding. Um, other fees, like a lab fee that will be the responsibility of a student or a parent or guardian, um, if there is some so sort of fee like that, then I will discuss that ahead of time with you and your student. Um, there is a, a 30 hour credit hour funding cap for dual enrollment now. So once you have met your 30 credit hours of funding, you would either not be eligible to take dual enrollment classes anymore, or you would have to select to self-pay for those dual enrollment courses. Um, make sure that you have completed your funding application through Georgia Futures. There is a portion for a student to go on and complete and then a portion for the parent to complete. So please make sure that both of those have been completed um, as soon as possible so that we can get your courses paid for. Some academic information. Um, so these courses, dual enrollment courses, are on the student's high school transcript, but they also begin the student's college permanent transcript as well. And so they begin there on the transcript and they affect the college GPA as well as the high school GPA. Academic courses by HOPE eligibility will have 10 points added to the grade prior to posting to the high school transcript. Now those points are removed for HOPE GPA calculation, 
However, they do remain on the high school transcript and go into your GPA, your high school GPA calculation. As far as final grades, um, if there's a numeric score that is reported on the transcript from the post-secondary institution, then that is the score that will be put in our transcript here at the high school. However, most of the colleges that we work with, they report letter grades. And so those letter grades will be converted and reported as the chart shows here. A little bit more academic information. Um, all of our students must maintain satisfactory academic progress as defined by their post-secondary institution. If a student fails to enroll in or pass a class required for high school graduation, there is a chance that they may not be permitted to participate in the May graduation ceremony. So it's very important that we have communication, um, not make any changes to our schedule after they've already been communicated with me. Um, and if there are any changes that need to be made, then we need to talk about that up front. Um, and so you must communicate with me before you withdraw, drop, or change a dual enrollment course. Um, a few notes, a, a dual enrollment course that um, is a withdrawal failing given at the college will equate to an F on the high school transcript. Um, a student who becomes, a student becomes ineligible to continue receiving dual enrollment funding after his or her second course withdrawal, and that is a state dual enrollment regulation. Um, and the key is early communication. So please just know that you can contact me with any issues or questions or concerns. Um, this is very important that students must abide by all student conduct and academic policies, including plagiarism, attendance, academic integrity, et cetera, set forth by the institution. Failing to do so may result in academic probation by the college and or dismissal from the dual enrollment program at CHS. As far as transfer of credits, so credits are earned through dual enrollment may or may not transfer to other post-secondary institutions. Um, the determination of credits are made by the receiving institution. Um, typically, you can look up transfer equivalencies on the school webpage or by calling the institution's registrar's office. Um, you are responsible for requesting transcripts to be sent from the dual enrollment college to the receiving school, um, and that's typically done on their college website. So, for example, if you have attended Young Harris College and need to send those transcripts from Young Harris to UGA, then you would go to the Young Harris website, the registrar's website, and request those transcripts to be sent. Um, seniors that are taking dual enrollment courses must send their dual enrollment institution transcripts to all colleges that they are applying to. Also, your final transcripts must be sent upon completion of all dual enrollment courses. So for example, if you're applying to colleges in November um, and you get accepted, then you would still need to send a final transcript after you finish your courses in December or in May so that they have a final transcript with your courses that were in progress when you first applied. A few additional details, um, students must comply with all rules from the post-secondary institution and the high school. Colleges loan the dual enrollment students their textbooks. So if they are not returned to the college, then they will be charged and there will be a hold put on the transcript and on their registration for the following semester. So you have to make sure that you get your textbooks returned or pay the fee prior to that um, hold being removed. Rules and procedures regarding dual enrollment are subject to change without prior notice by the Georgia State Board of Education. Um, again, there is a mandatory orientation for all dual enrollment students on Tuesday, August 9th during ROAR in the auditorium. Um, and this is for all dual enrollment students must be present no matter what college or institution you're going to be attending. Um, after that initial, the first part of the meeting, we will release the other students and only the Young Harris students will stay for a specific Young Harris orientation. Um, but all students must be there at the beginning of the meeting. If you have any questions or concerns, Throughout the semester, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can call me here at the high school, 706-335-5942, or you can call me at 
or you can call email me at cameron.shirley at commercecityschools.org. I look forward to having a great semester and um, please let me know if I can help you in any way.